Welcome to the caucus, our weekly discussion of the top issues in national politics. I'm John Harwood, and I'm joined by Michael Shear, who runs the caucus, the politics blog on the New York Times website. Michael, uh, there's been a lot of talk about gridlock in Washington, but the president is actually signing a small business lending bill. How significant economically? How significant politically? Uh, certainly significant economically. Both parties came together to agree that they needed to do something uh, to boost small business. Politically, it's certainly important for the Democrats and Mr. Obama's party uh, to try to show that they're doing something, anything, uh, to help folks uh, get jobs and spur the economy. We've only got several weeks left until the, uh, the midterm election. Uh, the, the president's party is certainly on the defensive, trying to, trying to find ways to show that the president can connect to those folks who are out of work. Uh, so it's, it's an important uh, moment, uh, whether it's enough uh, ultimately to help the party, uh, the president's party, stave off what is expected to be some pretty heavy losses, that, that time will tell. And pretty hard to convince people that Washington is working more effectively when people are in the mood they're in, and we've had so much disagreement on other issues. Well, right. I mean, look, one small business bill is is not going to convince folks after after what they've seen over the last uh, 18 months of, of, of the kind of division and argument and clashes between the president's party and the Republican party. I mean, folks, folks are angry about that. That's part of what's driving the message uh, that, that voters are trying to send here, at least that's what polls suggest. And so, uh, sure, important, but not, uh, not maybe going to change the, the overall dynamic. And I've talked to aides on the Hill who say the only thing that will make people feel better about us is if we adjourn and get out of town. Is there anything else that Congress does before they leave? Well, they have to do a couple of cleanup things to try to make sure the government doesn't shut down. They, they have bills, that budget bills they haven't passed, so they've got to pass a continuing resolution. Shutdown wouldn't help either. Shutdown would definitely not help. You, you think back to 94 and, and 95 and how that uh, uh, played very poorly for everybody. Uh, you know, they, the, the big thing, though, is what they're not doing, which is the tax vote. You know, there had been a sort of building cre crescendo uh, of, of expectation that there'd be this big political clash over whether or not the Bush-era tax cuts would be extended for middle-class families as the president wants or for everybody as the Republicans want. Uh, that vote is not going to happen in the Senate. The Senate announced they weren't going to do that until after the election. Uh, in the House, there may still be a sort of a uh, symbolic vote, uh, but bottom line, that issue, that big clash, is going to be postponed until after the elections. And clearly, both sides think that issue will help them from their different points of view in the campaign. The president certainly has been making that argument that Republicans are holding hostage middle class tax cuts for tax cuts for the wealthy. He goes out and makes that argument on a big stage this week, not. Uh, just the small stage that he's adopted right. recently. Talk about the thinking behind that and can he recapture the what worked so well for him in 2008? Well, that's really what they're hoping. You know, the, the president uh, at the end of the 2008 campaign especially had, had become this magnetic draw. He could fill up Mile High Stadium in Denver with tens of thousands of people. He hasn't done that as much. He's been going small. He's been going to these backyard events, you know, in, in people's backyards with 10 and 12 regular Americans. And, Which he's going to continue doing he, this And week. he's going to continue to do that, right? The White House likes that sort of uh, Main Street America uh, feel to that. However, the, the White House and the, and the Democratic Party are also aware that they need to pump some enthusiasm into the base. They need to get people excited and whipped up. And they feel like that's something that he can do uh, independent of, of any particular candidate. So he's going to Madison, Wisconsin uh, tomorrow. He's going to have a rally. The, the folks uh, Democratic Party predicts it could be the biggest one since the campaign. More than 10,000 people could show up, it, it, it feels like. Uh, and, uh, and they're going to do several of those over the course of the next several weeks to try to you know, whip up enthusiasm among young people, but also more broadly just among the Democratic electorate. And are Republicans concerned about that? Or do they think, given all the other things in their favor, that the air is out of that balloon? Well, I mean, you never, if you're the Republican Party, you don't take for granted what uh, what a president does, even one whose uh, approval ratings are somewhat lower than when he came in office. But uh, I can tell you that talking to the Republican leadership, I mean, they, they, they very much feel like the momentum is on their side. There's some Senate races uh, that maybe they didn't expect to be competitive, that they are, they feel like they're competitive in. West Virginia is an example of that. Uh, House races, they feel very strong that they can uh, take over the House and are already, uh, as you've seen, sort of prepping for, uh, uh, for that leadership swing. And they're also beginning, after a period of financial disadvantage, to accumulate money in some outside groups. Our colleague Jim Rutenberg wrote about that. Carl Rove, Ed Gillespie, other right. veteran They're figures back. are involved. They're back. <laughs> uh, talk about their strategy with these third-party ads and how do Democrats counter? Uh, 
Well, what the what the Republican Party has done uh, is is not so much raise money through the regular channels, but has sort of assembled a series of these outside groups, capitalizing on some of the uh, new changes to campaign finance uh, and, and and fundraising that allows them to uh, get a large amount of money from folks who don't necessarily have to disclose uh, where they're from. That's given the sort of overall Republican. Uh, 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 candidates uh, a, a real financial advantage. What the Democrats are doing is trying to counter that uh, with some really aggressive ads, uh, digging into the personal backgrounds of a lot of these Republican candidates for financial problems, other personal problems, and really highlighting those, basically making the argument that, look, if, you know, if, they're ha if they have these problems in their personal lives or have made these uh, personal statements, can you really trust them uh, to be in office. And what's the backlash risk of that? Well, it you know, it, the the backlash is that you never know how far you can push voters. You know, the the the, the trick among political consultants uh, is you know, people say they hate these ads, but they work, you know, and you can you can highlight campaign after campaign where these negative ads really do have an effect the effect that folks want. However, there's always that line, and if you push it beyond that line, the voters can rebel, and, and, and it could come back to haunt some of these Democrats. Will it work? That's the question for the last month. Thanks, it is Michael. Indeed. Sure.